Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today we're going to talk about device services clustering, or what we call DSC. And just a little bit of, of history on, you know, F5 and, and uh, high availability. Uh, back in the day, we had, you know, we had active uh, standby systems. And then we had active active systems. And so it was, whether it was active standby or active active, it was two devices. You had your, um, your big IP one and your big IP two. And then, you know, you had your servers back here. So we can draw servers there. And then, of course, in the front, you had your cloud environment, and then you had all your clients. And in an active active scenario, you, I'm mean, sorry, in an active standby scenario, maybe this guy was active, and we'll just say that this guy is, uh, we'll do blue for standby. And in this scenario, um, you know, all of your traffic is going to come to your active box. If there's a failure there, say we, we kill this guy, um, then all of your traffic is going to fall over to the standby. You know, that's, that's pretty basic stuff. The, uh, the change then, if you wanted to have an active-active system, is that you would activate some of the traffic to flow to unit two and some of the traffic to flow to unit one. And so, you know, if there was a failure here, the active traffic would join the active traffic on the other box. Some of the pros of the active active is that, you know, you're always utilizing your hardware, so you're not in a scenario where you know this is good because all of your traffic is there, uh, and then you fail over and you realize, oh, well, this guy was standby, but he wasn't really as healthy as we thought, or we didn't sync over configuration, and so things didn't work quite right. Um, but one of the negatives of active active is that if you are um, greater than 50, actually that's a less than, greater than 50% load there and greater than 50% load there, when you fail over, now you're over 100% of the capacity of your systems. And so, you know, what, what do you do at that point? Well, then you're looking at deploying another set of highly available devices. And so whether uh, the the problem that device services clustering uh, look to solve is to be able to scale out. And so it's that N, N plus one mentality. And so how that works, uh, start and DSC, we'll, we'll DSC from here on out. Uh, DSC was released as part of 11.0, and that was uh, almost five years ago. So it's been out there for a while, but there, we still get a lot, of quad, a lot of questions on exactly the, uh, you know, how DSC works. And so, you know, you can still deploy active, active, or active standby with two devices in a cluster, uh, but you have many more options than just that. And so before we move on uh, to looking at how, uh, you know, you put together um, a DSC, let's look for a few seconds about, or a few minutes about terms. And so, you know, we'll start with device. And a device is a big IP of any type. So it could be a VE, VCMP, it could be Viprion, could be an appliance, it could be any of those things. And you can cluster any of those things together. Um, whereas in uh, the past, you, you had to have like hardware. If you're going to put an HA group together, uh, this and this had to be, um, it had to be identical. And so then we have the device group, which is, a group of devices uh, that have established a trust relationship with each other. And so um, you have, uh, we'll say, trust here. And so when they've established trust, what we're really saying is they've exchanged certs. And so, you know, an FQDN is required on your big IPs. You can't just call them big IP one, two, three, four. You actually have to create a, an FQDN. Um, and then do the cert exchange. Once they've exchanged certs, they can communicate um, across channels with those credentials. They've built a trust group. And then we have sync groups. 
In sync groups, there's two types. There is a sync only group, and then there's the sync fail, oh, I'm sorry, fail over group, okay? Sync only is just for configuration. Sync failover is where you're actually gonna be incorporating uh, HA into that. So uh, this is config here, and then this is config plus HA, all right? And then, so if we start kind of laying out what this looks like in a cluster, let's start with a group of big IPs here. See, that's five. Okay. So what we're going to do for this is let's let's say uh, big IP one, two, three, four, five. You're going to pretend those are FQDNs because I'm not going to write them all out. So we have our five big IPs, and within these five big IPs, I'm going to put all of them into a trust group, okay? So all five of these devices trust each other so they can exchange information with each other. And then I'm going to create in that trust group, now I'm gonna create a traffic group. I'm sorry, I'm gonna do a sync group. We'll do traffic groups here in a minute. So we're gonna call this uh, device group, uh, and this is a sync only one, okay? And so now I can exchange all configuration objects uh, from all of these devices. So if I want to push an ASM policy or I wanna push a virtual server, I can push that to all of these devices. It doesn't necessarily mean that those devices are gonna carry that traffic, but I have that uh, config object available on all these devices. And so, Within this, I can then have other uh, sync groups. So sync only group, um, devices can be parts of, of multiple uh, groups, but it, a device can only be part of one sync failover group. So let's create another sync failover group, or sync group, and we'll make that, um, see this is, let's call this device group one. We'll call this device group two. And then this one is sync failover. And then we'll create another one. Let's use another color. Uh, I'm running out of colors. Let's do orange. And then we'll create these big IPs as part of DG3. And this one's also sync failover. Okay? So within the context of a traffic group, we can then say on these three big IPs, let's say in within device group two. So this is sync failover uh, device group. And then I have, say, three virtual servers. And I have um, VIP one, VIP two, and VIP three. And those three, if I put them as part of a single traffic group called traffic group one, then because a traffic group can only be active on a single device. That means that, let's say I'm active here. Well, that means then these two for this traffic group are carrying no traffic. So for this one, I'm going to be more in a standby, but in device services clustering, it's called um, next active. Okay, and so should this fail, then because this one has been decided to be the next active, it will become active, and if this one's still down, then this will become the next active, and so on. And there are different uh, uh, algorithms to determine whether it's more round robin or if you're gonna use more intelligence and how these are all set up. That's out of the scope of trying to get all of that into this video, but, uh, but there are options for you on that front. But in this scenario, we have three in the device group, but now we only have a single um, 
big IP doing any work for this traffic group. So what we can do is instead of putting all of these together, we can say, okay, well, I'm going to put VIP1 in traffic group 1. I'm going to put VIP2 in traffic group 2. And I'm going to do VIP3 in traffic group 3. And now, because I have three individual traffic groups, and a traffic group can only be active on a single device, then I can be active there on traffic group 1, active there on traffic group 2, and active there on traffic group 3. And so each one of these, so we'll be, say traffic group 1 is active there, but then we're going to be next active there, and this one's going to be next active there, and then this one is going to be next active there. And so you can see that you can get very, very complex with all of your different configurations with your traffic groups. And just to clarify that, you know, your device groups are about devices and configuration and HA settings. Your traffic groups are actually determining where your traffic goes. And so you can see um, with uh, uh, TMSH uh, show CM status, that will show you the configuration of all of your, uh, your different uh, groups and, and where uh, your active uh, scenarios are. So hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, we'll, I'll be doing another of these videos with some of the enhancements to the actual load balancing characteristics of traffic groups uh, that is introduced in version 13 that came out um, just uh, recently. And so, you know, we'll see you out there in the community. Thanks a lot.